it is Thanksgiving, so obviously today I am going to talk about ba -ba -da -bum, English royalty. I did my makeup today based on uh, a look that I saw on Kate Middleton recently looking so regal and classy and elegant, and that inspired me to talk about a series that I had wanted to do for what? A year and a half now uh, and that is on the fragrances of royalty I mean who doesn't want to smell like a princess I certainly do many people have been intrigued by the royal family princes princesses with both the marriage of Meghan Markle and Prince Will Prince Harry sorry as well as recently the Queen Elizabeth dying, English nobility has been uh, very present in the media as maybe it always has. That being said, today I wanted to start a series that I'd meant to start uh, for over a year now, and that is on the fragrances of royalty. So if that sounds of interest of you, please stick around. Today we are talking about both the fragrance of Princess Kate as well as Prince William. Let's start with Princess Kate. So Princess Kate, firstly, firstly, let's just caveat this with, these are the fragrances that uh, royalty is said to wear. Honestly, if I have this collection of niche fragrances over here, uh, as well as designer fragrances, and I am just a normal teacher, civilian, I find it hard to believe that royalty would have one signature fragrance that they are loyal to. But I could be wrong. I also learned that at royal functions, royals aren't allowed to wear fragrance. So even though she had this great big extravaganza, looking so elegant with her crown and gown, she couldn't even don a fragrance, which is intriguing to me. Apparently, any kind of royal duty, she can't wear fragrance too. So that being said, Kate Middleton is known to wear Jo Malone Orange Blossom. They say that she loves the fragrance so much that at her wedding, she had it uh, spritzed all over so that as she walked towards the aisle and through uh, the halls, she could smell this lovely fragrance of Orange Blossom by Jo Malone. Kate is said to really enjoy the those soft, subtle, white floral scents. And her favorite, Orange Blossom, fits perfectly with this description. Orange Blossom by Jo Malone is a 2003 fragrance created for both men and women. It's considered a floral fragrance. Um, Orange Blossom was launched in 2003 with the creator of uh, Jean-Claude Delville, or Deville, I'm not sure how to say that. The top notes tangerine blossom, the middle notes of orange blossom, water lily, and lilac, with base notes of iris and vetiver. Now in that description, obviously a lot of white floral citrusy notes. The inspiration of orange blossom was a stay in the Hotel Bel Air in Los Angeles, as well as its romantic atmosphere of the times of colonial Spain. As with all of Jo Malone's fragrances, she uh, to make it more your own, you can blend it with other of her scents. To make it more of your signature scents, she recommends blending with white jasmine and mint or blue agave and cacao. The fragrance combining palette can be found on her website. Uh, I really enjoy Jo Malone's scents. They're very light, they're very fresh. At least the ones I have experienced are uh, the downside to Jo Malone is as beautiful as they are, they don't tend to last as long, at least on me. They are very, I'd say their duration is short to medium, obviously a bit longer if you spray it on, if you apply your lotion and it's still damp and you spritz it on, or if you spritz it onto your clothes, you're going to get a little bit more life from it. Uh, that being said, Siage, I would say, is probably low to medium as well as... The duration of wear would be low to medium so keep that in mind it is a reasonable priced fragrance and like i said there are very few jo malone scents that i have experienced that i have not enjoyed they are all very fresh and classy elegant probably easily loved by most her husband prince william uh, also enjoys a very citrus light scent Prince William is said to favor Blood and Bouquet by Penhaligans, which actually has a bit of a royal history as that the perfume was created for the Duke of Marlborough. Intriguingly enough, his grandfather, Prince Philip, is also said to have favored Penhaligans Blood and Bouquet. Blood and Bouquet is considered a citrus aromatic fragrance for men. It was launched in 1902. Top notes include a Malfi lemon, lime and lavender, base notes being pine, black pepper, and musk. So just from the notes alone, you can tell that it is a very citrus, crisp, light, fresh scent. 
So I'm sure he coordinates extremely well with Kate wearing her orange blossom. Sorry for the beeping, I actually wrote my notes for this video on my computer and apparently I'm getting a lot of notifications, so excuse the beeping. Being a citrus fragrance, Blonde and Bouquet isn't going to have the life that other Penhaligon fragrances might have had. I really enjoy Changing Constance by them, which also has a more uh, shorter life or shorter longevity. According to Frangratica, Blonde and Bouquet is said to be mo both moderate in longevity as well as Siage. So to give you a bit of a history on Blonde and Bouquet by Penhaligon, it was created over a century ago in 1902. It has also been one of Penhaligon's staple fragrances ever since its creation. It is considered a unisex fragrance, though I have mixed reviews on that. Some say it's just, you know, it's a men's fragrance. Others say it's a unisex fragrance. Walter Penhaligon was who created the fragrance. It takes its name for Blenheim Palace in England. As I said, Walter Penhaligon created the fragrance for the Duke of Marlborough, for the ninth Duke of Marlborough. Mar Marlborough. Interesting enough, uh, Prince Philip was also said to have worn Hamam bouquet. Y'all know how much I love history of all these things, but Hamam bouquet was a very uh, popular and um, successful fragrance in 1872, which was an homage to Orientalism. Penhaligon also sought to create an ode to this European fragrance. The result was Blend and Bouquet. Uh, Winston Churchill was said to favor this fragrance as well. The family history, though, extends further than that. It was originally inspired by Blenheim Palace in Oxfordshire, where Churchill's ancestors, the Dukes of Marlborough, were seated. The fragrance itself has undergone very few uh, reformulations, so it's amazing how a fragrance this old with this vast of history can still be as modern and appreciated today as it was a hundred years ago. The fragrance itself has a very citrus, uh, light, crisp, fresh uh, effervescence to it. The top notes open with a malty lemon, lime, and lavender. Middle notes, there aren't any. And base notes, pine, black, pepper, and musk, as I said earlier, making this fragrance very inviting and probably appreciated by most. Personally, to me, I think it smells very royal. Maybe that's because I know that the vast history and the um, royalties that wore it. But it just, it smells gentlemanly. It smells elegant and fresh and prince and king worthy, as well as, I guess, prime minister. Uh, if you're thinking of a Christmas gift for someone that you love, uh, whether that be a man or a woman in your life that enjoys more citrus, aromatic scents, I definitely would recommend and Lennon Bouquet by Penhaligans if you have someone in your life that enjoys more of the fresh, fruity, white floral, or I shouldn't say fruity, but those fresh, citrus, white floral, then definitely consider Orange Blossom by Joe Malone. It would be a very safe fragrance to use in most any situation, probably why Prince William and Kate Middleton uh, choose the fragrances that they do because they are easy on the olfactory. Uh, for those around them. These fragrances are both very uh, spring-like in nature with the citrus and the floral. Honestly, I wear fragrance whenever I want to. It doesn't matter if it's a winter fragrance or a summer fragrance. Obviously, winter fragrances tend to be a bit heavier, uh, so they're not as wear friendly in the summer when the heat brings out those heavier notes. That being said, I think a fragrance such as Blend and Bouquet that does have the pine and the lemon and the bergamot, the pine and the lemon, I think would bode really well for Christmas as well. It would coordinate oh so nicely with the smells of Christmas tree. This starts off my very first video in this series of royal fragrances. I hope that you enjoyed it. To be honest, I uh, we're getting ready for Thanksgiving and we're going to leave in about 20 minutes. I really wanted to get this video made and out to you, and it actually took a lot of research to make this one. So I hope y'all enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed this series. If there is anybody in particular that you would like to uh, learn more of the fragrances that they wear, personally, uh, I am excited to do both the Grace Kelly and the Marie Antoinette one that I have uh, building. Please stay tuned. Please uh, stick around for those videos if you would at all be interested and it is starting to get crazy in here so I'm gonna have to sign off. All links to the fragrances for your convenience are listed below. Please check them out. Hope you all have a very happy, healthy, safe Thanksgiving. Please take care of those around you and be grateful for all that you have in your life. Appreciate you all. Bye-bye.